Church here, and welcome to the Game Grinder, and welcome to part two of the games that I beat in 2019. Now, if you didn't see the previous video, I would definitely recommend checking that out. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, essentially this year and the last few years, I like to do mini reviews of all the games that I beat the previous year. And that's exactly what we're doing here. 2019, I had beaten 58 games. The first part of the video, I cover the first 29, and this video, I'll be covering the other 29. So we have a few games to talk about here, so let's jump right into it. So first up for this video is A Plague Tale Innocence. Now this is a game that kind of came out of nowhere when I initially saw the trailer. I thought it looked absolutely amazing, and turns out this game was. In this game you play as a sister and a brother. You play as the sister, escorting the brother through these various areas and levels. The game is based during kind of the renaissance period when the black plague is ran rampant and there is a arcane supernatural element to it. Besides enemy knights and guards, the biggest obstacle is these huge rat swarms. And it's basically a third person action adventure game that uses a lot of stealth elements and it's all implemented very well. The story is great, the characters are really well thought out, voice acted well, but besides that, in the gameplay, one of my favorite parts was the design and the scenery. There was one part in the game where you walk out on this old battlefield and it, it was just awe-inspiring. It was horrifying, but awe-inspiring nonetheless. I think this was one of the best releases of 2019 and I would definitely recommend A Plague Tale Innocence. The next up is a random game that I ended up playing, and that is Kendo Rage. Now basically I loaded a bunch of ROMs on my SNES Classic and was checking out games that I wasn't familiar with, and Kendo Rage was one of them. And this is basically a character-based 16-bit 2D platformer, which really seemed at the time when I played it that it had to have tied in with something. And sure enough, this was an attempt to get a new franchise going. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, I'll, I'll put the information in the video here. But this was tied in with an anime OVA. They had a, a fun idea, but it didn't really deliver on the game. Now, I will give the game some credit. It has a lot of personality, tons of different character animations, but overall the game was pretty average. I will say I actually enjoyed the episode of the anime more than the game itself, so I'd recommend checking it out. It's pretty neat, and the game is kind of neat, but I wouldn't recommend it for more than a few bucks. The next up was a game that I was really looking forward to, kind of going off of the history of some of the other related VR games that I had played, and that is Trover Saves the Universe. This is the latest game from Squanch Games, that is Justin Roiland of Rick and Morty fame's game developer studio. He had a little practice run with the Rick and Morty, Virtual Rick Alley, and even Accounting Plus, where both of those are kind of smaller scale. Again, a lot of these like VR games are kind of like little experiences or tech demos, but this is actually a full-fledged game. I think the best comparison is that of Astrobot, gameplay-wise. But with this one, you have a little bit more freedom to explore. And of course, being Justin Roiland, there is tons and tons and tons of fantastic humor, great dialogue, a lot of it obviously unscripted. Oftentimes, I would find myself just standing, listening to these characters rant and rave and talk about whatever. It's absolutely hilarious. I was laughing so much the entire time I played through this game. Overall, it's about like seven hours or so if you try to find all the little extra collectibles. But yes, absolutely, Trover Saves the Universe, one of my favorite VR games, period. And one thing that's kind of neat is you can actually play this game without VR, so don't let that aspect dissuade you from checking it out. Yes, I absolutely loved Trover Saves the Universe. The next up is a game that I was hoping that there would be a physical release, and fortunately for me, Limited Run Games comes to save the day, and they did a physical release of Tacoma. Now this is a sci-fi walking sim or first person experience again don't let that name take away from the quality of what this is this is a very narrative story focused experience where essentially you are sent to a space station to investigate what happened to the crew and what events transpired the main gameplay element here is essentially there is you can kind of think of it as a security system that allows you to view certain events and fast forward and rewind the different character interactions so you can see what the characters were talking about and what they were doing at certain points of the game. And I found it very engaging, loved the story, the characters did a great job with the acting, and I would absolutely recommend Tacoma. 
Next up is a game that I had been meaning to play for a very long time and didn't get to it for one reason or another, and that is Dungeons & Dragons Tower of Doom. This is one of two Dungeons & Dragons based arcade beat-em-ups that have an RPG element with them. I'd say it's a pretty cool game. I don't have a ton to say about it. A lot of beat-em-ups are, you know, pretty straightforward, but I will definitely be checking out its sequel sooner than later. And then following that, I jumped into another arcade game, this time one that I wasn't really familiar with, and that is Shock Troopers. And basically, I kind of saw this one as an isometric metal slug in many ways. I really enjoyed what was going on in this game. It's fast-paced, action-packed. I had a lot of fun with it. Don't have a ton to say. I think the visuals pretty much give you a great idea of what this game is. And apparently there is a sequel, and I will have to definitely check that out as well. Then just like the first part of this video, again, I am playing along with a lot of games from the Cartridge Club and Quick Save Club and Cartridge Club Portable Game of the Month. And this time it is the Quick Save Club's Game of the Month, which was Planescape Torment. Now I've always heard fantastic things about this game. It is a very, very highly regarded CRPG. And after playing it, I now understand why that is. Planescape Torment is based in the Dungeons and Dragons universe of Planescape. In this game, you are playing as the Nameless One. You wake up essentially resurrected from death with no memories, some bizarre tattoos with some information on you, and a floating skull. Now, one thing that's really cool about this game, especially at the time it was released, is really the gameplay focus is not combat, which was very unusual for the time, and might have been possibly why some people were turned off. And unfortunately, those people are truly missing out on a fantastic experience. This game's strength is absolutely its story and its dialogue, the choices that you can make, and the outcomes of the conversations that you have. The writing is amazing, very descriptive, and again, I totally understand why this game is so highly regarded as it is. And of course, I would absolutely recommend playing Planescape Torment if you enjoy CRPGs. There's actually a spiritual successor that I have yet to play called Torment Tides of Numenera, which kind of takes inspiration from Planescape Torment, and I've heard great things about that game too. The next up is one of my favorite releases from 2019. This is actually a game that went to Kickstarter back in 2015, and that is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Now this is the spiritual successor to Castlevania Symphony of the Night, made by the same creator, Koji Igarashi, and he and his team absolutely nailed this game. If you like Castlevania Symphony of the Night, you would absolutely love this game, I would think. Plays very similar, has that kind of RPG elements, tons of different weapons, branching paths, different places to explore, different collectibles, interesting characters, great gameplay, excellent soundtrack. I think the biggest change, of course, is the art style, where Castlevania Symphony of the Night was a 2D pixel art based, where this is the 2.5 D with 3D rendered characters. But yeah, I absolutely loved this game. He delivered on everything that he promised. There is some additional DLC coming that I'm really looking forward to. But as is, I cleared 100% of the map. I got the good ending and beat all the secret bosses. And again, this was one of my favorite releases of 2019. I am so glad I backed this game. Seeing my name in the credits for a game that I loved so much, I'm glad I was able to participate in this game's development in one way or another, and that it was able to become a thing. The next up was another Cartridge Club game of the month, this time Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. Now, a few years ago, I played the first Uncharted game, but I hadn't played any of the other Uncharted games, so I thought this was the perfect opportunity to jump into that. I've always heard a lot of people say that Uncharted 2 really steps up everything that the first game did, and I have to agree with a lot of what people said about this. This game is absolutely fantastic. I enjoyed it thoroughly, although I will say I didn't love it as much as most people do. But the story was a lot of fun, the gameplay is fun, I really enjoy uh, Drake and Sully and the other characters, and I'm really looking forward to finally making the time to play through the rest of the series. Hopefully it won't take a Cartridge Club Game of the Month for me to finally play Uncharted 3 and so on, but I definitely intend to play those when I can. The next up is a game that I think is criminally underrated. I've never seen anybody else talk about this game. I randomly saw it on the Steam store page, and that is Toho Luna Nights. Now this game takes place in the Toho universe, which is typically a series of shmups or shoot-em-ups. 
but for this game, they moved away from that genre and made a Metroidvania. Of course, when I saw the trailer of this game, the first thing that caught my eye was the art style and the pixel art. This game is absolutely gorgeous. There was so much work and effort put into the character animations. Like, it's just a beautiful game. And it plays great, has some very interesting uh, time manipulation mechanics. And I think the main character using missile weapons with the throwing of knives kind of makes it a little unique compared to a lot of other games of this style. The boss fights kind of remind me of that of Rabby Reby, kind of the bullet hell gauntlet style. But yeah, I this game was great. I think more people really need to check it out. I think right now it is only available on Steam, but I could be wrong. But I think it's worth mentioning that the same developer is actually making a Metroidvania record of Lotus War game, which is one of my favorite animes ever, and it looks like you're going to play as one of the main characters, Deedlet. So I'm really looking forward to that. But again, if you enjoy Metroidvanias, Toho Luna Nights is definitely worth checking out. The next up is another Cartridge Club Game of the Month. Cartridge Club was actually playing Batman Arkham City as their Game of the Month. I'd previously played Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, so I thought this was a great opportunity to play Arkham Knight instead. I picked up a copy of this game at release and kind of sat on it as I heard there was various issues. I'm happy to say that most of those issues have been worked out at this point, and I loved this game just like the... The other Arkham series games, if you've played Asylum and City, I think you are doing yourself a disservice by not playing Arkham Knight as well. This is a great conclusion to that trilogy. Again, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill absolutely killed it as Batman and the Joker. The added Batmobile exploration and mechanics I think were a lot of fun and kind of helped mix up some of the gameplay. And I think the game looked gorgeous. Still one of the best looking games of this generation. So yeah, if you like the Arkham games, definitely make sure you play Arkham Knight as well. The next up, I was looking for some shorter games to play in anticipation for the upcoming Cartridge Club Game of the Month. So I was digging through my backlog, trying to find what were some of the most highly regarded games in my collection that I have yet to play. And one that had been sticking out in the back of my mind for quite some time was Inside. Now this is a follow-up game to the same developer that made Limbo. I'd only played a little bit of Limbo in the past and never beat it, but a few years ago Inside got rave reviews, a lot of publications gave it their game of the year, and I would definitely say that praise is absolutely deserved. Now this is a, basically a side-scrolling platformer, there's no dialogue throughout this entire game, all the story of what's happening and what happened is all expressed through the visuals as you make your way through these areas and different environments. I think the game was beautiful, morose, dark, inspiring. There's so many, so many different feelings that, that get brought up as you play through this game. The story is wild. I love the mystery behind it. And the ending, like, I, I would have never expected the game to go in the direction that it did. And I did get the regular ending, and there's also a secret ending as well that you can go back and basically kind of do a chapter select to unlock. And yes, absolutely, Inside, I would definitely recommend it. It is an absolutely amazing game probably end up somewhere on my list of best games ever made it is it is damn good then next up is a game that wasn't necessarily as short as inside but another shorter game and that is wolfenstein youngblood now i really enjoy the wolfenstein games this one is a spin-off that i thought looked pretty interesting the focus here was a co-op experience as you play as the daughters of bj blaskowitz and I thought this was a perfect opportunity to play another co-op game with a friend. It had been some time since I played any multiplayer games. So a friend and I played through this in a couple of sessions. Uh, my friend enjoyed it a lot less than I did. I thought it was fine. Basically, you're just running around shooting up Nazis. There's some replayability. You can basically kind of like grind through levels to get new skills and whatnot. But the game pretty much it ran fine, played fine. I enjoyed the characters. They were really moronic and made a lot of terrible, cheesy jokes. But I kind of find that a little bit charming myself. Wolfenstein Youngblood, I think, is kind of a tougher recommend. I would say if you could play it uh, cooperatively. I think it would be something I would probably recommend if you're just playing it by yourself. I might say avoid it. There's not a whole lot offered here other than a straightforward kind of shooter experience. But uh, in the end, I would say I did enjoy my time with it, mostly because I was able to play co-op with one of my best friends. The next up is another shorter experience. This is another game that was highly regarded that was in my backlog for some time. Always kind of in the front of my mind is something that I need to play when I wanted to play a shorter game, and that is Firewatch. Again, this is another walking sim or first person experience. 
This time you're playing a guy who took on a basically a summer gig of being a forest ranger and there's some interesting events that happen and you start investigating this mystery. I can't really say a whole lot without giving away the, the, the story beats but Firewatch is a absolutely fantastic game. Don't let the walking sim genre turn you off of this game because you're gonna, again, you're gonna miss a amazing story focused narrative that is just so well done. So yes, I would absolutely recommend Firewatch. Then next up was another Cartridge Club game of the month, this time a game that I've played many times over the years, and that is Chrono Trigger. Now Chrono Trigger is one of my favorite games of all time, possibly my favorite Super Nintendo game that tied with Final Fantasy 3, 6. It had been a few years since the last time I played Chrono Trigger, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to replay it. And this time I played the DS version, which I have never played before, and a lot of people said that this is kind of the definitive Chrono Trigger experience. It's Chrono Trigger with the PlayStation 1 added cutscenes without the PlayStation 1 load times. There was a couple things added to this. There's this uh, entire quest line called The Lost Sanctum, which I think I would really recommend anybody who's never played Chrono Trigger or replaying Chrono Trigger to completely avoid the Lost Sanctum. It completely goes against everything of what Chrono Trigger is and does right. Chrono Trigger is a very concise, to the point game. Everything that happens in Chrono Trigger serves a purpose to the story, where the Lost Sanctum is really, it, it just wastes your time and doesn't respect your time. It's a lot of back and forth, just back and forth, back and forth, monotonous questing up and down this mountain and going back and forth through time. And really, it was stupid and frustrating. I wish somebody told me to avoid it, but I probably would have ignored them because I wanted to find out for myself. But they did add an additional ending as well, which was the Dimensional Vortex ending. And this was actually pretty cool as it gives you a little extra information about the events that are inspired with Lavos and Shala. And this kind of serves as a bridge to Chrono Trigger, Radical Dreamers, and Chrono Cross. Not direct per se, but introducing you to kind of this multiverse theory that kind of plays out with the other games. So yeah, uh, Chrono Trigger, again, one of my favorite games ever. If you haven't played Chrono Trigger, what are you doing? It is amazing. I'm sure you've heard that before. So yes, Chrono Trigger. And I'd mentioned Radical Dreamers. Now this is a follow-up to Chrono Trigger that we never got in America. This was a Satellaview release in Japan, which was basically a kind of digital download service on the Super Nintendo. Now this game kind of served as a, a bridge kind of building off of that Dimensional Vortex ending from Chrono Trigger, but this serves as a bridge to Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross in some interesting ways. The game is actually a visual novel, which means it's very text heavy, lots of reading, lots of dialogue, and all choices you make in the game are kind of like ABC choice. Now it does give you some visual elements to go off of, so you're not just looking at text the whole time. There's there's backgrounds to kind of indicate where you are. And basically what you're doing is you're exploring this castle with a group. So there's actually choices where you can like go left, go right down the hallways. Uh, it's very descriptive. It's very much written like a novel. And I didn't have high expectations going into this because it's not really talked about a whole lot. But overall, I would say it exceeded my expectations. I really enjoyed the story, even though it's not like a direct sequel to Chrono Trigger. There's some very interesting concepts and ideas presented here that apply to the Chrono Trigger Chrono Cross universe. And if I was recommending this to other people who thinks it sounds interesting, I would say just play through the main story itself. There's actually nine additional bonus scenarios that you can do that are unlocked by doing some unusual choices as you play through the game. And these are mostly fun, just kind of like what ifs, almost like fan fictions by the developers based in this game's universe. Mostly very bizarre, very strange stories. But I did play through all of them and you can also unlock a sound test and a bonus bonus secret zero wing scenario. Zero wing might sound familiar if you are familiar with the all your base are belong to us phrase, which is again, it's kind of a very bizarre tie in with these, these secret endings. But yes, I would definitely recommend Radical Dreamers for those who want to kind of expand on the, the Chrono Trigger universe and can handle the visual novel aesthetic. 
Then next up, another kind of blast from the past game. This is a brand new game made with a retro game engine, and that is Ion Fury. Now, Ion Fury is a game that was released in 2019, made with the original build ending that 3D Realms used to use to make the games like Duke Nukem and Blood. And like I said, this was made with that engine. So this is under all the same restrictions of games made in the mid 90s. But wow, did they do such a great job with this. This was my favorite first person shooter that I've played in some time. The game has so much passion, so much character. Shelly Bombshell is an awesome lead. The levels are absolutely massive. There's tons of things to interact with. There's great voice acting, cool music. Like I really was just thoroughly impressed by this game. One thing that was kind of cool when they initially announced this game, they put up offers for a Founders Edition, which is basically a big box physical PC release, which I was able to get a copy of. But regardless, I would recommend Ion Fury. Some people might have heard of it being called Ion Maiden, but the game actually got sued by Iron Maiden, the metal band, because they thought the name infringed on their trademark, which is a little bullshit. But it is what it is. Ion Fury, awesome game. Definitely recommend it. The next up is one of the most talked about games of 2019, and that is Remedies Control. Now this is a third person action adventure game. For some reason, I have a struggle describing this game effectively. Basically, you are this character who is looking for her brother and she ends up coming across this bizarre paranormal focused corporation. Most of the gameplay takes place in this building as you are trying to piece together what this company is about. It's very bizarre, very abstract at times, very mind bending scenery. Gameplay is a lot of fun, but my favorite part was definitely learning about these paranormal entities basically items that are possessed in some way shape or form from a rocking horse or a refrigerator or a lamp it sounds really weird it definitely is really weird but it is it's fascinating to read about these different items the game is incredibly well made and i'm sure a lot of you heard a lot of people praising this some people gave this their game of the year for 2019 i wouldn't argue with them because it was a great game and i would definitely recommend control now what's kind of interesting is related to Control, actually during the end credits of Control there is a song that's played by a band called Porcupine Tree and I had mentioned that in my little Just Beat It review that I do when I finish a game and Jake of the Polykill podcast actually told me that Steven Wilson who is the frontman for Porcupine Tree and other projects actually was sort of involved with another game and that is Last Days of June. Now Last Days of June is really interesting as this game is inspired by a song by Steven Wilson called Drive Home. It's a beautiful song that tells a tragic story and this game kind of takes that concept and runs with it. So again this is a walking sim or a first person experience where you are playing as the boyfriend of the couple kind of dealing with the aftermath of this tragic accident and you're talking with local people kind of reconstructing the events that led up to this accident trying to turn back time and it's really cool because they actually blend a lot of different versions of Porcupine Tree and Stephen Wilson's music into the game and just that part alone really elevated it for me as soundtracks are big in games for me. But I thought the game was really unique and very interesting. So if you enjoy the narrative focused first person experience games, I would definitely recommend Last Days of June. The next up is another Cartridge Club game of the month. Again, one of my favorite games of all time and that is Starcraft and Starcraft Brood War. Now this is a legendary RTS game by Blizzard, this time a sci-fi setting, a galactic struggle between humans, alien Protoss, and the animal-like insectoid Zerg. I think this is one of the best examples of taking a game genre that traditionally doesn't have a huge story focus and mixing that into it in a very interesting and engaging way. I do enjoy the RTS genre gameplay, but my favorite part about StarCraft itself is the story and the characters. If you haven't played any RTSs, StarCraft would be the game that I'd recommend along with the expansion Brood War, which is essential. And I would go as far as saying StarCraft 2 as well, because it's one giant overarching narrative. I absolutely love StarCraft. Can't hype it up enough. Love the game. Definitely a must play. 
Then if you watch the first part of the games I beat in 2019, I talked about Catherine and mentioned that we would be talking about this game again, and that's exactly what we're gonna do right now, and that is Catherine Full Body. Now Catherine Full Body is essentially a remaster of Catherine, but with a very interesting added piece to this. So besides them remastering the game, making it look better, they did a really interesting thing with this, and essentially added in an entire new storyline, story arc, and more so than just, you know, slapping on this additionally, they integrated all of this incredibly well into the game as is. They added in a new character called Rin, who is another potential romance option, but the way they integrated this seemed flawless. Like maybe when they originally made the game, they did all of this and cut that entire section out, which is what they didn't do, and that makes it that much more impressive. Again, much like the first time I played Catherine, I absolutely loved playing through this game again. I had a blast playing through the new character arc with Rin. It's absolutely bonkers. And again, just like last time, I absolutely recommend Catherine if you enjoy what you see. For me, my favorite part about these games is the story and the social simulator elements, less than the puzzle platforming parts but yes, I would absolutely recommend Catherine Full Body, more so than the original Catherine, as I think this is now the definitive Catherine experience. Then next up was a game that I was really looking forward to for quite some time, and that is Code Vein. Now when this game was initially teased, people were saying, hey, this looks like anime Dark Souls. And in many regards, I can agree with that, but at the same time, I think that descriptor diminishes from what Code Vein is. It does borrow elements from Dark Souls or Bloodborne, you know, that usual from software formula, but I think Code Vein does some things that make it stand out on its own. Of course, the more direct focus on a story and characters where the most from software games are very abstract and obscure in the lore where this one you have a direct story characters with interesting backstories one thing that i really liked about it is that you can always have a companion with you as well as summon other people the gameplay itself i thought was pretty interesting there's lots of different kind of like what they call blood codes that you can use which kind of give your character a different style and build and access to different abilities. Much like the From Software games, this tickled me in all the right places. I absolutely loved it. Basically binge play through the game. Of course, I had to go for the true ending, which means all vestiges were gathered and memories were restored. And I am absolutely hoping that they do a follow-up to Code Vein as I loved this game. It was one of my favorite games for 2019. Then next up was another game that I was highly anticipating. Again, another game I backed on this time Indiegogo in 2015, and that is Indivisible. Now this game was made by Lab Zero, who is mostly well known for Skullgirls. If you've been following me for any amount of time, you might have heard me mention the names Mariel Cartwright. Mariel Cartwright was the lead animator for Skullgirls. She also was heavily involved with Shantae, Half Genie Hero. And Indivisible is essentially uh, very inspired by Valkyrie profile gameplay. This is essentially a side-scrolling platformer RPG, where mo for the most part you're traveling you know, left and right, exploring, using different abilities to navigate, and then when you encounter enemies, it splits into the RPG kind of turn-based format that Valkyrie Profile used. Of course, my favorite thing about this game was absolutely the animation and the art style. Hand-drawn, I mean, that's a winner for me. The soundtrack was great, fully voice acted. All the voice actors did a fantastic job. The story is very unique, and this game just bleeds passion. Again, I am proud to have been a participant in helping this game get created, and I would absolutely recommend Indivisible. The next up was a game that I was sitting on for a little while, and that is Man of Medan. This is one of the releases in the newly formed Dark Pictures Anthology by Supermassive Games, who had previously done Until Dawn, and Man of Medan is very much in that style. So if you know anything about Until Dawn, Man of Medan is basically the same thing. It's a very interactive, kind of like walking sim sort of game where your choices are very important. The choices you make will determine whether or not your characters can survive throughout this game. This is a horror game, but I didn't think it was too scary, but I did love the mood and the atmosphere involved. There's some fun, entertaining ideas. 
And even though I didn't get necessarily the quote-unquote best ending, all my characters did survive, so I'm happy about that. And I'm really looking forward to the next entry in the Dark Pictures Anthology, which they have announced at this time. The next up was a game chosen for the Cartridge Club Portable Game of the Month. This was a game I was heavily anticipating for some time. It was a game I was trying to get a copy of for a couple years now. And just a couple months prior, I finally snagged a copy of this for a great price, and that is Aliens Infestation. Now, one reason I was so hot on this game is this is another release by WayForward. WayForward, of course, now mostly known for the Shantae series. But Aliens Infestation was a really interesting release. I wouldn't say it's a rogue-like, but it does have some of those permadeath elements in it. And this is essentially a Metroidvania in the Aliens universe. And this game was made incredibly well. This is probably my second favorite Aliens game first one being Aliens Isolation, and then followed up now by this Aliens Infestation. The gameplay is great, it's moody and brooding, has some great alien action with the xenomorphs. I think the marine death and acquisition system is pretty interesting and makes for a perfect alien game. Great choice by Cartridge Club Portable, and I would definitely recommend Aliens Infestation. Then next up, and probably no surprise to anybody, was my most anticipated game for 2019, and that is Death Stranding. This is the latest game from Hideo Kojima, who is mostly well known for the Metal Gear series. And this is his first release as an independent studio with Kojima Productions. And what an amazing game this is. It's relatively decisive, as I think a lot of people who are kind of trash talking it didn't really play it or even give it a chance but this game does some very unique and very interesting things of course it has a star-studded cast with people like norman reedus romo del toro and even conan o'brien makes an appearance and basically you are traversing across the united states reconnecting cities and that is really the focus of the gameplay is this strands system or building these connections, but not just with the, the the different cities and places and survivors that you encounter with the game, but along with other players as well, as this is truly a multiplayer experience where you never really encounter other players. As you traverse back and forth through an area, you'll actually wear paths into the ground. As you build roads, other people can help contribute to their construction and you build bridges and put up ladders and it really helps you not feel so alone in this post-apocalyptic setting. I thought the story was pretty mind-bending. I think it has some pretty fascinating concepts. I think the BTs were very interesting enemies. I absolutely loved this game. Like I said, this is my favorite game of 2019. I couldn't recommend it enough. I will definitely give a shout out to the reviews done by Caleb J. Ross and Tark's Gauntlet. I think they really hit on some very important things of what make this game particularly special. So definitely check out their reviews if you haven't seen them. And if you're on the fence, I would say, you know, give it a shot. I think you'll be surprised on what this game offers. Then next up was the final Cartridge Club Game of the Month for 2019, and that is December's Game of the Month of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Now, I had never played this game, which is kind of surprising, as I absolutely love Bioware. Bioware is one of my favorite developers, and this came out right after Neverwinter Nights, which is a game that I can't talk more highly of. Contained one of my favorite gaming experiences. I've talked about Neverwinter Nights many times in the past, but I digress. We are talking about Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. If you want a good comparison, I think it stacks up well against that of Neverwinter Nights or maybe even Dragon Age. This is a role-playing game, more of the slow and methodical kind versus that of the direction that Bioware eventually went with Mass Effect, which is a little bit more fast-paced action. And I loved Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Again, this is another fantastic CRPG. I think Bioware nailed this. I love that the game didn't have to lean on any of the movies, which allowed it to be its own rich Star Wars based experience. I figured since I was playing this game currently, there was a great list of community endorsed mods that helped fix some of the bugs, enhance some of the visuals, and re-add some cut content back in the game. So I essentially went all out with this game and I had an absolute blast and I'm really looking forward to playing Knights of the Old Republic 2 when I get the chance. The next up is what essentially is kind of the end of an era, and that is Shovel Knight King of Cards. 
Now this is the final expansion to the Shovel Knight saga. I hope everybody knows about Shovel Knight and I hope everybody knows that the expansions for Shovel Knight are all free. And not just free, they're substantial. None of them are necessarily longer or shorter than the Shovel Knight campaign itself, but they're all fantastically well made. And actually I would say King of Cards was probably my favorite gameplay besides Shovel Knight itself, where I think Plague Knight was kind of my favorite story of the Shovel Knight series, but King of Cards was a blast. I absolutely loved playing through it. The Jostas card game that's added in I thought was a lot of fun and for those who have no interest in the card game you don't really have to play it you can basically skip it but this is the last of the promised stretch goals for the Shovel Knight crowdfunding campaign so as is that's it for Shovel Knight there's no plans for any further Shovel Knight stuff which is kind of bittersweet as I loved this entire experience but it's definitely sad to know that this chapter is over. And again, if you haven't played Shovel Knight, what are you doing? This is one of the best indie games available, one of the best platformers ever made, and it is, all of its expansions are fantastic as well. Then last but not least of the games that I finished in 2019 was another game that I was highly anticipating, and that is River City Girls. Now this is the latest release from Way Forward, and this is based in the Kunio Kun universe. Most of you would probably recognize games like Double Dragon or River City Ransom. And this is, again, like I said, based in that universe. This follows the girlfriends to what are usually the main protagonists. And what an awesome game this is. I mean, I'll just come right out and say it. This is probably my favorite beat em up ever made at this point. The gameplay was a ton of fun. Lots of great unlockables, different moves you can do. Soundtrack is amazing. And I absolutely, again, pixel art is a huge thing for me. This game is so good. WayForward killed it. Megan McDuffie did an awesome soundtrack. And the developers, yeah, I, I mean, there's not a whole lot I, that I can say that you can't tell from the visuals. It does a better job of explaining what this game is. I absolutely loved it. If you enjoy beat em ups, I definitely recommend this one. Again, another game that just bleeds passion. And of course, it's always hard to go wrong with a great co-op experience. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to play this in co-op. It probably would have made it a lot more enjoyable, but how do you enjoy a game that you'd already say is like a 10 out of 10? And I think River City Girls is a 10 out of 10. Like I said, I loved it. And you know what else I loved? 2019 in video games. Again, I thought this was a fantastic year. I played so many great games and I hope you enjoyed me talking about them. There's nothing I love more than introducing somebody to a new game that wasn't on the radar. So with that said, I would love to hear your thoughts on some of these games. Definitely let me know which ones you've played and enjoyed and I'd be interested to hear in ones that you are interested in checking out. And what are some of your favorite games from the second half of 2019? So yes, again, I hope this video didn't go on too long. There's a lot of games here to talk about. I love talking about games, so it's very easy for me to ramble on. And with that said, I think 2020 is already starting off to be a great year. A lot of awesome releases coming up here. I am so hyped for this year. So yes, again, that is going to do it for this video. I would love to hear your thoughts. And then as always, thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you next time on The Game Grinder.